oldest boys in the neighborhood. And probably like you when you were young, we played a lot of hide and seek. Nighttime hide and seek. And the best days to do it, of course, were the the times when the moon wasn't shining and it was pitch black. And we came up with a, a version of hide and seek we called football tag. And football tag, it was so much fun. Listen, I'm 12, 14 years old at that point, And there's like 15 kids in the neighborhood. And even the, even the parents would come out after dark and play football tag with us. Football tag would be one person is it. He's got a football, preferably a Nerf football. And everybody scattered and hid. And his job, his, the part of his game was to go and find people. And when he hit someone, they were on his team. And they went through the neighborhood looking for, looking for the kids that were hiding. Uh, and they weren't all kids. They were adults even. And uh, uh, when they found someone, they, they were to tackle them and hold them down till I could hit them with a Nerf ball if I, if I was it. And before long, it was so much fun because the, the whole neighborhood would be looking for someone. I mean, it's 15 kids against one, and it became very fun. I got in trouble. With the garage door, with the garage door all the way up, I would hide on top of the garage, garage door. And they could never find me unless it happened to pop when they were... It would, it would ripple or pop, and I kind of got in trouble for hurting the garage door. But that's kind of what this story reminds me of. Uh, I've never played kick the can. But if you've never played football tag, it is a, uh, to me, it's a better version than kick the can even. But I want to talk to you about a man, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. That's one of the first stories we all learned as a, as a child. Uh, I'd like for you to join me in Luke chapter 9, starting in verse 1. In Luke 9, starting in verse 1. It's kind of fun just remembering those times. Those times. Uh, I, have a, I have something I haven't cleared with anybody else, so this is my idea if it doesn't work. If this is the kind of snow that you can make snowmen out of, while we're plowing, while we're shoveling, while we're if if the kids and families want to come and we'll have a snow snowman contest over here in the yard, and uh, I mean adults can play too, of course. And I just thought how much fun it would be to have a a family outing. Maybe if we can get with someone who would make a big pot of hot chocolate. And make a night of it. So think on that, would you please? Lord Jesus, you know what's in my heart. I just hope, Lord, that you will help me pour it out. Pour it out into these folks' hearts, Lord. Asking you, Lord, to open the doors of their heart. To be able to receive a blessing from this message. Some sort of blessing, Lord. One that will help them or help them to help others. Lord, I pray for your presence, your power, and your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke 19, verse 1. And Jesus, in, and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now, by the way, he's on the way to Jerusalem to be crucified. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Right now, Jericho is an Arab city. And you're not allowed in it. When we were, when, and it's very close to Jerusalem, really. And uh, they won't let you go because, because of uh, uh, people with machine guns guarding the gates to Jericho. Even now, it's a serious place to go to if you're not one of them. He entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus which was the chief among the publicans. Now, when you see publican, you can replace that word with tax collector. He was the chief tax collector. You can imagine just how popular he was. 
and he was rich. You hardly see that in the, in the scriptures. He was one of these rich men that were rich off of other people's money turned into him. And above, it's just amazing. And he, this rich tax collector, sought to see Jesus, who he was. I want you to notice Christ came to save even the chief of publicans, the chief tax collectors. Christ came to save the worst of sinners and those that were rejected by society. We, we, have, we have those in our lives that, and maybe, maybe here, but we have those in our lives that are on the peripheral uh, circle of, of, of society and maybe because of just their own upbringing, they just don't get along well with people. Christ came to save the worst of sinners and those rejected by society. Zacchaeus was rich. Christ had lately shown how hard it was for rich people to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Yet here he produces an example of a rich man that's going to get saved, who was lost and would be found. I wanted you to notice how he came to find Christ. And he sought to see Jesus, verse 3, if you're with me. I hope you're following along. And he could not because the crowd, because he was little of stature. And he ran before the crowd, climbed up in a sycamore tr tree to see Jesus, for he was to pass that way. Those that sincerely desire Christ will use any means possible to find him and will not be stopped. If you're looking for purpose in your life, no greater purpose than to seek out Christ and to try to get to know who he was and who he is. Wow. He had a curiosity. He wanted to, wanted to see Jesus. What kind of a man Jesus was, he was interested in that. And having heard great talk of him, his curiosity led him, led to his and his family's ultimately salvation. You know, sometimes our children, our children get in trouble. Sometimes that trouble is simply because of curiosity. They might need to be rebuked, but they also need to be encouraged to answer, they're trying to answer their own questions. Uh, we have a, a granddaughter uh, that lives in Virginia, and instead of, instead of fishing, she likes to tear the reels apart to see how they work, see how the gears work. And you can't really, you can't really fish very long with her because there's always one of those, what do they call them, Ron, a rat's nest? There's an, always a nest, and uh, my wife and I, the last time we were there, did some fishing with them, me legally. I had a license. But uh, we, uh, I ended up spending most of my time, as my son's time, trying to fix her reels because she just is so curious. She wants to see how, how things work. That can be a good thing. Yes, it's a bad thing if you're the fixer. But encourage your, your children to be curious and also courageous, to have courage. They'll, they'll need courage. They'll need courage to hold on to their faith as they grow up in this unchrist like world. Well, I wanted you to notice the call. The call of Christ to Zacchaeus. Every service for 22 years before I preach, I rehearse my call, my calling up here by myself or in this little entryway right here. It's important, at least for me, to know that I'm up here not by I, my choice. I'm up here because he 
called me. Zacchaeus is going to have a calling upon him. And when Jesus came to the place, verse 5, he looked up and he saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for I'm going to your house today. The thought just strikes me. First of all, God knows our name. God knows our name. Christ knew his name. Jesus knew Zacchaeus. Jesus knows your name. You're so important to him. If you were the only person on earth, he would have come for you, not just for the billions or the trillions. He would have come. He loves you and he knows who you are. You're not insignificant. You're important to him. And you will have, you will have a part in God's, in God's calling upon this earth, in God's evangelism, and helping someone else who might, who might help someone. So remembering that, remember your calling. And when Jesus came to the place, he said, Zacchaeus, come down for I'm going to your house today. It struck me, it struck me how, how did he know? How did he know Zacchaeus' name? Psalms 139, verse 1. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. He, that's the thing. This is past tense, too. You know me. No, I'm not perfect. No one here is perfect. Everyone here has some mistake or something that they uh, feel shame about. Everyone. And it's important for you to know that Zacchaeus, in a moment you'll see, he, he's going to feel shame and he's, he's, going to, he's going to respond to Christ. Jesus knows us. Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising when I sit down and when I get up. Thou understands my thoughts afar off. We cannot control all of our thoughts. But the more of Christ, the more of the word, the, the more of good music, it has an effect upon our minds. How we can... We, we can know him, how he can understand our thoughts. There's, there's shows, TV shows and movies we watch that penetrate and absorb into our hearts and minds that maybe we shouldn't be looking at because they take control of our mind, our mind being a sponge. Thou circles my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. He knows. He's acquainted with everything, everything we've ever done and what we're doing now. He's acquainted with it. There's no hiding. There's no hiding from Christ. He's acquainted with all my ways. He knew who Zacchaeus was. He knew how much he cheated the others, but he still... He was still important enough to have Christ visit his house. He knew Zach by name. He might ask as Nathaniel did in John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, Jesus is picking up his disciples and he saw Nathaniel coming to him and, and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Well, how does Nathaniel respond? Nathaniel said to him, I'm trying to get this up right. Nathaniel said to him, Where have you known me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw thee, which probably blew his mind. How did he know? How do you know? He knows us. He's all-knowing. He's omniscient. 
Wherever we are at, He's with us. In John chapter 10, it says, He calls His own sheep by name, and He leads them out. And then to verse 4, And when He puts forth His own sheep, He goes before them, and the sheep follow Him, for they know, they recognize His voice. I love that. In Jeremiah 1, 5, it says, Before I was formed, you knew me. Before I was formed in the belly, you knew me. A verse used for precious life. Zacchaeus. Jesus' invitation to Zacchaeus, if you'll join me in chapter Chapter 19, verse 5, there in the middle, Zacchaeus made haste, and he came down. For today I must abide at thy house. Wait, Zacchaeus said. Let me go home first and straighten it up. Let me get, let me get rid of all of the bad things that are there. Let me go through and clean my house out before you, you come into it. No, Zacchaeus didn't say that. Zacchaeus invited him in and uh, they, they had dinner together. The Pharisees called him, came too. It was a big, it was a big block party. But uh, before he comes into your house, he, he doesn't expect you to clean it up, your heart. He'll help you clean up your heart. One person said to me years ago, I can't get saved right now. I've got things, I've got things to work on. No, don't put it off. Don't put off coming back to Christ. If you've if you backslidden, don't put it off. You'll never get it done. Jesus wants to help us and provide the power within us to clean up our lives. He came to look upon Christ. With no thought of being noticed by Christ, he probably thought that he was it, that was an honor too great and too far above what he deserved, but he was wrong. Now listen, we don't know how many people were there as Jesus was walking in to Jericho. We don't know, but the crowd's moving as Jesus is moving. And Zacchaeus, he can't even get, he can't, he, he's short. He he can't see through the crowd. He wanted to get a look at, at Christ. And out of that whole, whole group of people, Jesus searched him out of that tree, knew him by name, and now he's going to his house. He that has a mind to know Christ shall be known of him. Sometimes those that come to hear the word of Christ, like Zacchaeus, Sometimes only for curiosity's sake. Beyond what they thought of, have, they have their consciences awakened and their hearts changed. Those that Christ calls must come down out of their tree. They must humble themselves. We're never as great as we think we are. We're never as small as we think we are. They must make haste and come down. Do it now, right away, for delays are dangerous. Zacchaeus didn't waste his opportunity. He made haste, came down, and received Jesus joyfully. If onlys, regrets, and someday I'll, not now, later. Those are all answers we get when we're trying to help someone find Christ. Those are all answers we give God when we aren't ready to change our life and give it over to Him. If only's regrets, someday I'll. Zacchaeus didn't waste his opportunity. Don't waste your opportunities, especially your spiritual ones. 
Hmm. Especially your spiritual ones. Zacchaeus was overjoyed to have such an honor put upon him. His receiving him into his house was an indication and proof of his receiving him into his heart. When Christ calls to us, we should make haste to answer right away. Don't put it off and receive it joyfully. Receive him joyfully. We lose much when we do not take advantage of our opportunities with Christ. We lose much. And every time you open the word of God, the God of the word is in your hands, in your lap. Don't waste those opportunities. Hmm. I wanted you to notice the offense which the religious but lost crowd, the, the Pharisees, I wanted you to notice that in verse 7, when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. Notice the proofs which Zacchaeus gave and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I will give to the poor. How many of you would do that? Would say that? And this is a gross sinner and he's willing to show his, show his repentance through giving half of his property away, half of his money away. Half of my goods I give to the poor. None of those religious but lost would have done that. And he says, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I'll restore it fourfold. Would you do that? Would you take, would you take something... Uh, from someone and years later be guilt ridden over it and give four times what you took? That's what Zacchaeus did. He stood, which shows his, his saying it and meaning it. He meant it. He meant it as a vow to God to take a stand. He who has wronged others must make a stand, must Give restitution if possible, if he has the power. He makes it appear that there is a change in his heart, and that change is repentance, is shown by repentance, for there is a change in his way. Some are big talkers with no follow through and with no repentance. Years ago, 10 years ago maybe, a man brand new to the church stood up over here and uh, in, in the way of a testimony, he's, it was his first time here. In the way of a testimony, he stood and addressed everybody and he said, I want you to know I'm going to join your church. I love this church. I'm going to be here whenever it's open. I'm going to find ways to minister. I'm going to, and he went on and on and on and never saw him again after that. Amazing. There was another man like that stood over there almost next to Roby's window. And he said, and he said uh, the s similar things. I'm back. I, I left the Lord. I backslid. I'm back. And I love this church. And I'm going to be here. He lasted two weeks. Some are big talkers with no follow through, with no repentance. Some are big talkers with no follow through and no repentance. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that says to me, not everyone that calls me their Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But only he that does the will, obedient to the Father, which is in heaven. And then that last verse in that section, Matthew 7, 23. Then I will profess unto you, I never knew you. I didn't know you. This is Jesus speaking. He knows all of us. But he says, I never had a relationship with you. A give and take relationship. A personal relationship with God. I will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, 
ye that work iniquity. And when that is said in the future, I believe there will be lots of yelling and screaming and wait, 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 there's a mistake. There's a mistake. I went to church, I did this, I did that. I remember one time we had, we had kind of a notorious person up front in a coffin. His family weeping and crying right here. Uh, hadn't been in church for decades. Uh, died of a drug overdose. And the only thing the family could find was his vacation Bible school certificate. And they put it in, they put it in the casket, hoping, I suppose, that that would be enough to get him into heaven. I wanted you to notice Jesus' answer. Verse 9, Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For as much as he is also a son of Adam, he was, he was an Israelite, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. There's uh, very special thoughts about this, but I wanted to kind of condense all this and, and to say about Jesus. He notices us. He invites himself into our hearts. The part I like is, he knows my name. <laughs> That's about Jesus, about us. Do we let him in our hearts as Zacchaeus did? Or do we lock him out? If we lock him out now, he will lock us out later. He will lock you and I out later if we lock our doors and not let him in to our lives. Jesus said in Revelation 3, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hears my voice and open the door, Zacchaeus did, I will come in to him. I will sup, have, have supper with him and he with me. Verse 21, to him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in the throne, in his throne. And he goes on with this one. Come to me. All ye that labor, and there are those that labor and are heavy laden. We all have those. If we don't have our own, if we don't have our own problems, then we're helping others carry their problems. We are, we are to... Uh, help others get past uh, their burdens as well. Take my yoke upon you. Come, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I, God, will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek, I am lowly. I am lowly in heart, and you shall find rest to your souls. Thank you, Lord. Wow. He goes on to say in this, he says, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Some of us carry burdens. Some of them aren't of our own making. But because of who we are and our sensitivities and the way we feel and our mercies, we carry a burden for others. And it's hard. Listen, delays are dangerous. Yokes, if you don't have Christ in your life, yokes get harder. Burdens get heavier. That's about us. About Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus showed acts of repentance. Religion without repentance is easy believism. And hell is filled with those people who casually believed.
Not everyone that says to me shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. In Luke 13, except you repent, you shall all likewise, you shall all likewise perish. Now, repentance is a very important part of Christianity. Repentance, we don't repent before we're saved. We repent because we're saved. Repentance is more than being sorry. Repentance is being sorry enough to change. Many people, big talkers, they're always sorry but then they return to their, their old sin. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10 says, For godly sorrow works repentance to salvation. Godly sorrow works repentance to salvation. Not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Worldly sorrow, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, with no repentance. Work at death and there will be many like that in hell. Listen, stop playing hide and seek with God. Stop playing hide and seek with God. Stop regretting your life and answer the door. Behold, again, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. He will sup with me and he with me. There is that famous picture most all of us have seen of Jesus standing at the door and knocking. You need to notice sometime that there's no doorknob. The door needs to be opened from within. Jesus doesn't force his way into our lives. Stop playing hide and seek. As the musicians come, would you bow your heads with me? Lord Jesus Christ, oh God, I pray that there might be someone here within the sound of my voice who would open the door and let you in. Even right now, I pray, dear Lord, even now, there might be someone who has their foot halfway in, halfway out, I pray right now, Lord, the Holy Spirit will convict us to get rid of our regrets of the future and to answer the door now to invite you into our lives. Lord, there might be someone here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. And today's the day. This day above all days could be the day Someone opens the door of their heart and lets you in. They would say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I know there's a penalty for being that sinner. I know that you paid my penalty. On the cross, you died for me. Jesus, come into my heart. Help me to clean it out. Come and live through me, in me. Lord, there might be others who are backslidden. They've fallen away. It just happens. Let them, Lord, come back to you. Let them to get down out of their, cre their tree. Let them to stop playing hide and seek with you. Lord, you're so great. You're so wonderful. You're so powerful. You're so loving. And you're so merciful. And you're such an easy forgiver. Forgive us, Lord. In Christ's name, amen.